Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Boros Life Gain. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Today, we are taking a break from the community deck list. You guys have been amazing as, as you've been sending us gameplay or, or decks that we can do for gameplay video. It's been an absolute blast. I really love playing your decks, but I wanted to try something a little bit different today with really one goal in mind, which was to create a rotation-proof deck uh, that was built around life game. Uh, and so that was kind of my prerequisite for building this list. Obviously, white was going to probably be the featured co uh, uh, color in the deck. Uh, but obviously, teaming it with a lot of things like green are really good in a lot of cases right now. But rotation is very close to, uh, to around the corner here. <clears throat> and so I wanted to make sure that we were building something that was rotation proof uh, that we could at least try out and just see if it's working. Uh, I don't anticipate it doing super well. I'll just be upfront. Uh, but I did want to give it a shot and just see what we could do. Uh, and that's And that's really where this list came together. Uh, normally in Splashing Green right now, you get a lot of really important things, including uh, the Moon Dancer, which is one of the biggest uh, draws for playing that life gain list. But we also have things like Righteous Valkyrie, things like that, that we aren't going to be able to play post-rotation. And so I wanted to make sure that we were including stuff that only, you know, kind of worked in that realm. So that really pushed us more into red. Uh, for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, Sacred Fire. Uh, I do have the full four here. I don't think that's necessarily correct. We're kind of, again, using this as a launch point for the deck, not necessarily the end-all be-all of the deck. Uh, but dealing two damage to any target and gaining two life at instant speed for two mana is pretty good right now. Uh, even against a lot of the opposing like Planeswalker decks, this hits and kills most of the Planeswalkers that come in and minus on their first ability. Uh, so as an example, the Wandering Emperor, phenomenal at dealing with that. It actually deals with Lolth quite well because it bypasses the creatures altogether. Uh, and just handles a lot of things very efficiently. It also does give us long term a way of dealing a couple extra points of damage to hopefully finish the game or gain some life depending on what we need. Of course, both is, is really the answer. Uh, Lantern Flare is another interesting one here. We planned this a little bit with uh, cards like Wedding Announcement, but the idea being you deal X damage to target creature or planeswalker and then you also gain X life. If you don't cleave it, it's just equal to the number of creatures you control, which again is why we're playing into things like the wedding announcement uh, to throw some of those creatures down for us. Uh, but we can actually, of course, just pay that X and it becomes X. Uh, we also do on the red side have the angel fire ignition, again, giving us that flashback sub theme, uh, but also granting lifelink and allowing us to get aggressive is a really good way of really separating the life totals of each player. So ours is hopefully gonna go up while theirs continuously goes down. And all that does is give us a little bit of buffer for the late game, uh, which is really taken over by things like Sigarda's Splendor, which will hopefully uh, draw us a couple extra cards. Wedding Announcement can also draw us cards, at least before it flips. Uh, the Wandering Emperor is hopefully going to be able to start taking over the game with that plus ability and, of course, exiling things on the opponent's side. Uh, and then, of course, Intrepid Adversary is a great kind of board uh, altering kind of card, so it lords up a lot. Uh, Voice of the Blessed is, of course, the big payoff, but we do have Traveling Minister as a way to kind of gain life every turn, and then Lunark Veteran as well. So uh, sitting at the top also, I should say, we have a Myria's Call, which can help us kind of finish the game very quickly. Some tech in the lands, nothing too crazy, but we do have two of the Windscarred Crag. As much as I don't love the tap land, I do like the life gain with the Voice of the Blessed play, and so that does kind of help a little bit. We'll see if this works. Again, guys, we may not win a single game today. Truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised, but we are gonna do the best we can to see if this deck actually works and hopefully have some fun with it and maybe it will spur some ideas in your thought processes. Uh, and maybe you can play with this and see what you come up with. So feel free, take this deck, play with it a little bit, but let's jump right in. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Let's see what we can do. Uh, bit of an interesting hand, definitely more removal heavy, but I think we can try it. If we find ourselves against like a Boros aggro deck, uh, this is actually quite good because we can answer a lot of the things that they have and gain life in that process. Uh, Forest is actually a nice start because it does signify that they will probably have some things like this. Um, all right, so we just pass uh, and leave up that sacred fire and we'll probably end up hitting the pack leader with it, uh, which is fine by me. 
Technically, we could have tried to uh, kill kill it on our turn, but I really don't think it matters. Uh, and I think this is just kind of proving that point, so not really worried about it. Uh, let's go ahead and forward our game plan a little bit here. Let's make sure we've got the wedding announcement going. Uh, we can use it to trade here if we need to, uh, at least as the time as it stands now. We'll see if that actually becomes the case, but uh, that's fine. And they do not attack. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right, so we can hit for two at the moment, which is not good enough, obviously. Um, we can kill this if we wanted to, but I think more importantly, we're actually just gonna get another wedding announcement down. Uh, so what this is gonna do is give us basically three creatures. So if they wanna attack with this, uh, we're either gonna three for one or they are going to have to kill one of our one ones first. Uh, either way, we've got enough now on the board that it's gonna be more difficult for them to actually deal with everything all at once. So that's actually very helpful for us. Uh, we could even just let this come in, hit for three, and let them draw a card, uh, but we'll see. Uh, I would rather wait to block this until we can, you know, just Lens Flare, or excuse me, Lantern Flare, not Lens Flare, uh, or Sacred Fire plus block, you know. Um, nice, so they do have Beseju. Uh I will certainly take the action to go grab a land, um, and I think we'll just take a red. Uh, it just gives us more options later on. It's nothing too crazy, but it is certainly useful. Although, <laughs> yeah, now I'm actually thinking maybe it shouldn't have been. Um, ooh, definitely messed up here. So if we had gotten white, uh, we could have done a lot better here. Um, that is a little frustrating, but I think we'll just block here. Get rid of the 2-1 and not really worry about this. Uh, they get a card off of it. That's not great, but it's not the end of the world either. Um, yeah, this should be okay. So let's go ahead and drop this. Um, I'm going to Lens Flare. Uh, let's see. X to the number of creatures. Yep, let's go ahead and get that out of there. Um, the question is, do we want to actually use this one also? Uh, I'm just going to Sacred Fire now. <laughs> uh, this allows us to attack in, um, which is important because we do need to draw some cards. So I think this is probably just better. Uh, we definitely misplayed. If we had gotten a white, we wouldn't have taken potentially any damage and they wouldn't have necessarily drawn any cards. We could have been in a much better spot, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you're not always going to get it 100%, and that was just a mistake on my end. So they are going to, I assume, kill a couple of things here. Yeah. Uh, which is frustrating, but again, not the end of the world. Okay. Um, so we can do this. Yeah. All right. So we do this. We do this. Uh, we lens flare this uh which again gains us some life back and then we get to attack in draw a card and then all of it flips and we've got some two twos on the beal on the board not beal uh better than the one ones <laughs> uh which just means that teach up to one target creature yeah so that's not gonna necessarily deal with anything which is great Excellent. And there we go. We actually got the win. Fantastic start. Uh, that was kind of amazing. I didn't necessarily think we had it there, but the opponent clearly thought we did. So I'm fine with that. Let's move on to game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and I will keep this hand. It's a little bit sketchy for sure, but uh, we do get to run out on the play here and then of course we have the sacred fire to uh kind of deal with whatever we might need to uh would love absolutely love to get some more lands here that would really be just super beneficial uh let's go ahead and attack in um and i'm actually gonna run out the intrepid adversary here uh normally i would wait but we actually have a cigar to splendor that we're probably gonna want to play on turn four versus the intrepid adversary and so i think i'd rather just go ahead and get that that down um this is just a nice little two mana threat as well so uh land is good i will certainly take it let's go ahead and attack in I'm trying to think what they could have for two i don't know that there's a ton um but we'll see okay 
Um, and I will just go ahead and play the minister. Chances are, uh, and I'm not blind to this, chances are they are going to have a Doomscar or some kind of sweeper. Uh, and these Bant decks, a lot of it is like a Bant control style list. So you've got things like the Wandering Emperor, you've got Doomscars, you've got some very powerful things uh, that we are going to have to consider as we go through this. But uh, this is actually kind of fine. Uh, let's make sure we're in full control here. And let's do this. Oops. Let's make sure we didn't miss the opportunity. I am going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, so then we can kind of just keep the game plan moving forward. I will definitely play the wedding announcement and definitely get the attacks in. Alright. Uh, there's our fourth land. Again, we knew we were going to... I mean, we didn't know, but unfortunately we did miss it that turn. So it was nice that we were able to draw it at least off of the wedding announcement. That's phenomenal. Uh, and that's good, but not going to be enough. For sure. Um, Alright. I will throw this out. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to attack him for five. Uh, fully anticipated them blocking here. That's fine. I don't particularly care. The goal of our, our game plan at the moment is to just keep things moving in the right direction, and we get the 1-1 out of the deal, so our wedding announcement is going to flip. That's bad. Uh, that's very rough for us, but we'll see what we can do. All right. So we are going to draw another card here, which is nice. Unfortunately, it is just a land, but... Uh, a land is good. Land's important. Um, hmm. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do this. Do we want to also attack here? Probably not, right? So we can attack here. Um, really signifies we have something, um, but I'm assuming that they're just going to block with one of their 4-4s. Four yeah. Don't have to do that. We can do this. That was really silly. Uh, Alright, so this will give us the first strike that can handle this, so we keep this around. Alright, that was better. Woo! Did not think that through very well. Alright, <laughs> awesome. So we are going to give first strike here, which saves the 4-2. We will get another creature, and then these all flip. Uh, and we're up to 38 life, so at the very least, we're making it difficult on the opponent to really get in for you know a game-winning play anytime soon. The trick is, obviously, a lot of the value in their cards is probably, I, I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say going to be a little bit higher than a lot of the value of our cards. Uh, and so it's just something to consider that we are going to probably take some hits here. But uh, it's not the end of the world, so we'll see what we can do. They are going to crew, naturally. Um, pretty obvious that we're just going to block with the 1-1. One, one. Uh, I don't... I'd rather keep the Wandering Emperor around. That just seems way more helpful. Um, we still get to draw an extra card here, which is nice. Ooh, and it's a Lens Flare. Uh, I say Lens Flare. It's a Lantern Flare. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Now, how do we want to do this? Uh, we can just start attacking in with the cave. Uh, that's perfectly reasonable. Um, alternatively, what could, else could we do? Just trying to think through my options, guys. It's always important to do so. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. So this now has first strike. Okay. Let's uh, let's be a bit silly. Let's attack in. Uh, not necessarily playing this 100% correctly at all, but it's more fun this way. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. Uh, we are going to gain another life out of this. We're going to kill the 4-4, four, four, which is good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and... We really didn't even have to do that, did we? We could have just done that. That was dumb. See, this is why you learn along the way, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll leave up one of these guys just to be safe. Um, yeah, that wasn't the best play, in hindsight. Definitely not the best play, but it's fine. 
Uh, we'll see what they decide to do. I'm sure it's just attack with the Asika's Chariot. I don't know why they tapped the 5-5 five five to do it. That seems a bit odd, but that's fine, I guess. Um, cool. I'm a bit confused by some of these plays, but we obviously aren't playing perfectly either, so that's fine. Uh, so the question is, at this point, do we want the Wandering Emperor to go down? Um... Uh, I think it's actually fine. We'll see. I'm not sold on that either, but let's let that happen. Let's not auto pass, actually. Let's go into full control here. Um, huh. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Broker's Ascendancy, man, such an annoying card. Uh, such an annoying card. So we could... Try and get through for a little bit. So we'll hit one of these. Gain some more life out of the deal. The trick is they can start whittling us down. So that's that's kind of the scenario that we don't want to happen, but we don't really have a great way out of it at the moment. Uh, we are drawing extra cards though, which is helpful, so. Land, land. All right, Luminarch, Veteran. So let's do this first. Uh, basically, we're just trying to outpace him. Um, whoops, definitely messed up. Again, I always forget about these guys, but that's fine. Get in for an attack. We'll throw one of these guys out there. Gain a life. Uh, yep. And we'll pass. So we should have pumped this up. That was a mistake. We could have made that a turn or a two turn clock, uh, which would have obviously been better. So that was a mistake. I'm actually not gaining the life here so we can block um, because I think that might be more important, but we'll see. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. Huh. Very interesting. Okay. Um, I'm actually fine to lose that, and I'm fine to lose the 3-3. I kind of want to keep the ministers for the game life potential. Um, all right, again, so we're just trying to draw extra cards here. Like, that's our focus at the moment, is to find every little ounce of we can win the game on the spot stuff that uh, we can find. Uh, unfortunately, that is not going to do it. Do we think they have something? Wandering Emperor would be terrible. Okay, um, so we have four um, four points of burn, uh, which is really important to note. I think we kind of have to go for this, though. Let's do it. I'm assuming they have Wandering Emperor, uh, so my expectation is this will not work. But we're going to try. Uh, yep, look at that. Who called it? <laughs> uh, all right, but so the trick now is we're baiting them into a situation where they uh, will potentially go all out, in which case we're going to lose a lot of life, but we've got Angel Fire Ignition plus another Angel Fire Ignition. And we're going to get closer to winning. Oh, man. All right, well, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to win it. <laughs> I will say, though, I mean, on the interest of gaining life, we're doing a pretty good job of it. We just are losing the top end. We just don't have it. Uh, and so that is certainly worth noting. Like, a Doom Scar here would be amazing. Uh, and maybe that's a situation where we do need to incorporate some of those kinds of things just to be able to save ourselves this kind of defeat, uh, if that makes sense. Um, we're just going to pass because saving... A little extra damage here I don't think is really gonna matter um, but I mean brokers ascendancy uh, this card is just so good uh, against us so we don't get to draw an extra card here yeah that's not good um, hmm
I don't think we can win, right? So we can deal some damage there. That's not really that helpful. Two, three. Nah, I think we just lose. Um, yeah, some of that might be down to the way we played for sure, but I think we are just going to lose here. So might as well gain a life. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go ahead and shoot this for two just so she's down to one. And we gain three more life. Um, yep. Unfortunately, I think that's going to be it, though. Uh, there's really not a lot we can do. They get so much damage off. I think we're just going to good game them here, guys. Let's uh, let's move on to a game three. That was kind of a rough one, no doubt about it. But it was a really interesting game, and I think it tells us a lot about the deck that might need to be fixed, uh, which is fine. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into game three. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are. We are one and one, so let's hope we can do a little better this time. Do we like this hand? Uh, generally, no. Um, the lantern flares are not very good. I think we just... Ugh. All right, we'll keep on the interest of we have two into three, and hopefully we can draw a red source, but uh, this is certainly not a great start. We do need to get one more win. If we can end on a two and one, I'll be happy. Um, truthfully, I'm just happy we got a win. And truthfully, we weren't that far away in the last game. We were kind of close. Um, certainly, they just took over, which is fine. I mean, I think that's what that deck is built to do. So that's not all that surprising. Um, but I think we are learning the, the faults of the deck, which is that it's not super resilient against things like enchantments or artifacts. And so we just need to keep that in mind. Uh, let's see if this actually sticks. Surprising if it actually manages to get into the next turn. Um, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, I think, you know, anytime you're building a deck like this, uh, which is, A, a concept that obviously isn't as good, otherwise it would have been at the top of the meta a long time ago, but B is also one of those things where you're kind of just testing something out. Um, it makes sense that you're going to find faults. It makes sense that you're not going to always get the win or that you're going to lose to a strategy that you would normally be able to prepare for because you've got, you know, a better, solid, more well-defined deck list. This is a starting point. Uh, and so I do want to emphasize again that I, I mentioned this at the beginning as well. If you're testing this deck or if you want to try this deck out, please feel free, but do make sure you try it for yourself and, and mix it up a little bit. See what other kinds of things you can make happen. Uh, this is not the end-all be-all of this list. This isn't the, you know, y there are different ways to build this. And so I think it's a really important thing to be able to do that, uh, test some things out, and just see where you go. Uh, so far, not great. Um, yeah, this is gonna be rough. So we can do this. We can kill the Goblin Shaman if we do this and then Lantern Flare. Um, alternatively, we could just wedding announcement and hope that we can lantern flare later. Honestly, I'm going to go for the long-term play, uh, and we'll see if this actually pans out. Uh, at the very least, this does start to flood the board a little bit, which just makes that lantern flare potentially better on the upcoming turn. Uh, reflection cannot copy Goldspan quite yet, which is important. <laughs> uh, there's the Paseju. Wow, they actually played it out as well. Um, against a wedding announcement that's about to flip, I wouldn't have been surprised if they had actually gone for it, but it's fine by me. All right, they're going to get in for four damage. Uh, obviously not great. Ah, okay. Well, that explains a lot. Um, so they are going to blow up a wedding announcement here. I'm assuming. Yeah, it looks like so. Uh, obviously not the best option for us, but we'll see what we can do. There's our tapped land. Kind of shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit with that, but that's fine. Let's gain the life. Um, and, I mean, I think we kind of have to do this. Uh, as much as I don't want to do this, uh, we kind of have to. Um, we'll see if they have a, uh, a play here. It could be that they have like a negate or something, which would really be a, a big damper at this point in the game, but you know, it's fine. Uh, we did not have a strong start here for sure. Um, yeah, let's see what they do. 
I'm also curious if things like Splashing Black, as an example, I'm, I'm curious what that would do for the deck, or if it would even be worth it. It may not be, um, but I'm just kind of curious. Uh, we're not going to attack, I don't think. Uh, the only reason I say that is because that allows you to do things like Vanishing Verse, which is a much more permanent way of dealing with things. We don't really have Exile effects in the deck. Uh, and I've, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you probably understand how important that is, in my opinion. Yeah, here they go. Uh, they get another Titan of Industry. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kiki Jiki, man. Uh, we should have Sacred Fired that, I suppose, and maybe just taken the four from the Gold Span. So, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, we have learned a lot about what does not work with this deck, and that's okay. All right, so they obviously are gonna attack in for a lot. Um, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, they could have attacked for lethal if they had wanted to, but I suppose they didn't. I'll block the four and take the 14. Uh, just in case they have a play with fire or something, this kind of saves us from losing to that. Um, does it doesn't save us from everything, but it is a start. All right. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Whew, what a rough, what a rough set of set of games here. We did get one, but we're definitely not going to get another. <laughs> uh, opponent kind of playing a little slow. There we go. All right. Um. So literally, like all we can do is this, but then we just lose. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna good game them here. They definitely have us guys. Let's wrap this one up Let's go ahead and talk about this deck. Let's see what we think All right So first and foremost again to set the context of why we even made this deck because I could very easily see somebody watching this saying Well, this wasn't really a very good deck. Why would you even consider it? Totally understand uh, a rotation proof and B I wanted to specifically play with life gain um, that was kind of the prerequisite that I set for myself. Now, why I picked life gain, I don't really have a good reason. I just thought it would be a nice starting point. We'd try it out. Um, I think we see why this deck doesn't really work very well in the current meta, uh, which is just that a lot of decks outpower it, basically. Um, so what's the answer? I mean, what's the takeaway from that? Because I think that's an important thing to note as well. What could we do to make this deck better? Um, I think there's a couple things. So first and foremost, I would suggest we do need outs. Uh, so this is a very focused list and that it's very focused on just that life gain element uh, and kind of flooding the board. It's got a little bit of tech in it for some card draw, but that's really it. it does have some minimal burn uh, in Sacred Fire in particular, but it's not necessarily good at answering a lot of things, especially the big things in the meta. So what do we do about that? Well. Doomscar is always an option, um, but that is going out, uh, and so we need to find another solution. Maybe it's Farewell. Maybe Farewell is the solution. Maybe that'll help with the uh, the issues that we were having. That would handle a lot of different, uh, you know, it exiles, graveyards, uh, basically the entire board. Whatever we needed to deal with, it could deal with. That would be a really nice little catch-all for the deck uh, in these kinds of situations where, as we saw in that last game, we really were just completely outpowered. There's really not a lot we could do about it. Um, what other things, though? I mean, just basic artifact removal, enchantment removal, things like that were always going to be helpful. Potentially things like Fable of the Mirror Breaker could be helpful. Uh, maybe slightly less focus on just the life gain and a little more focus on something else. Maybe there's something different we could be going for to diversify our card types a little more to get a bit more flexibility in the board state. Uh, we only have two Planeswalkers in the deck and they're both Wandering Emperor. Uh, and so maybe there's some area there to play around with. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I truthfully am not sure, but I think all of these are options worth exploring. Uh, and I'm, I'm intrigued to see what Dominaria United brings that we can start to throw into decks like this. And so I did want to get that started early. We're partway through August. Um, I do want to start kind of playing around with some of these rotation proof decks that we can build on later on uh, once the new set is out and post rotation. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it wasn't necessarily the most powerful deck, but it's a fun starting point and a fun conversation to have that I hope you will take part in with me and we'll talk about it. That's all we need to do. So uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I love you all very much. I will see you guys tomorrow.